Just like having relevant and accurate information is necessary to make sound, hiring, and lending decisions, being engaged in our community is important. Datafax is proud to support the positives and be a sponsor of The Spark. Lipscomb and Pitts Insurance is honored to serve the Memphis community for over 60 years. We've always focused on supporting our community and believe in promoting the positives, encouraging engagement, and leading by example. Lipscomb and Pitts Insurance is proud to be a presenting sponsor of The Spark. Additional funding for The Spark is provided by Christian Brothers University, Mueller Industries, My Town Movers, My Town Roofing, My Town Miracles, and by Serves. This month on The Spark, our theme is the power of creating art. We'll learn more about an organization that's creating community through independent film and supporting the development of filmmakers, a family theater providing wholesome entertainment and youth education, and a company known for its storytelling and striking photography, along with a Memphis photo collection that gives back. We'll also share a special moment from our Spark Awards 2017. Ever been excited by a new idea? Inspired by watching someone lead by example? When we talk about creating change, we start by sharing the stories of everyday heroes making a difference in their own way so we can learn and do the same. This truth is the power behind this show which is focused on business and community leaders who are leading by example to give back, fuel change, and create new opportunities for the Mid-South. I'm Jeremy Park and this is The Spark. They're an organization supporting and building community through independent film and the development of filmmakers. I'm here with the executive director for Indie Memphis, Ryan Watt. And let's start Indie Memphis. You're doing some really cool things, obviously around indie films, promoting filmmakers, developing them. But give us a little bit of history for the organization. Yeah, we've been around. It's our 21st year now, um, mostly known for our annual film festival. That's how we started, and that was the main thing we did for the first decade. Uh, but now we've expanded to programs that go all year round, films every week, and uh, helping helping develop filmmakers in Memphis. And so you do. You have a weekly film series. So let's start there. Sure. So. Films every week? Yeah, I mean, we have at least two every week. We rotate locations to kind of hit different areas of town at different Malcos, but also Crosstown Arts. We also partner with other places like Civil Rights Museum or the Memphis Library and host films. And most of these are films that would not have premiered otherwise in Memphis. So we're, we're bringing a film before you can see it on Netflix. And uh, often we'll have a Q&A with a filmmaker or a speaker before or afterwards. Nice. Is there any, or what's the, you know, when you look at different topics and themes, is that a big focus of it? Yeah, I mean, especially when there's documentaries. There's a lot of great, highly acclaimed documentaries, and they don't open in theaters and markets the size of Memphis. So that gives us a chance to host kind of a special screening, like we did the Jane Goodall documentary, and you know, sold out audience, and all these kids came out with very interest in her work. Um, so documentaries especially, and then when it comes to dramas, a lot of times if they don't have uh, an A-list actor, they're not going to have a huge national release. But there's some really amazing movies that premiere at Sundance and Cannes Film Festival and uh, places like that, and we give them a, a premiere in Memphis. Very cool. Talk about, you mentioned youth. You have a big focus on youth and youth development, so talk about that. Yeah, we're on a third year of a youth program. Uh, so we have an annual Youth Film Fest, which is uh, September 8th this year and uh, students can still submit. It's completely free to submit a short film. Uh, we recommend under 10 minutes. Uh, so students this summer can still be working on films and it's for grades seven through 12. But if they don't make a movie or they just have in interest in learning more, the event is free. And so we have workshops all day. It's at the, the Halloran Center next to the Orpheum. So it's a chance for students to learn from professionals. And then the students that have completed films show it on a big screen in front of a, a big audience and kind Very of get cool. the reaction from, from Memphis. And that's got to be cool, especially at yeah. a young age. So how yeah. young can they start? Well, so uh, a seventh grade is, is when we start so that we can you know, kind of have the uh, education based on junior high and high school level. Um, and so anyone that's younger than that, you know, if they want to work on something and submit it to us, it's okay. But the, the workshops are for seventh grade and above. And talk about workshops, because the development of the filmmakers is a big piece of what you do. Mm -hmm. um, share with us a little bit more about the workshops, the programmatic side of mm -hmm. developing them. Yeah, so on one hand, we're, we're talking about kind of 
um, bigger picture things like storytelling and directing and directing actors. And then we have technical workshops. So we have cinematographers have the students, you know, hands on set up the lighting equipment or learn about lenses and uh, and editing. Editing such a big a big part of it. So at the last Youth Fest, they took a scene and showed the different ways you can edit it and how you get a completely different result right. with just either my, minor little changes to it. So. And these are all things that you know you look at, especially for a student. But these are life skills that they can make a lot of money in the film industry here in Memphis, LA, New York. I mean, these are things they can carry with them and really be successful. Absolutely, uh, and it also you know touches on a lot of different areas. So actors, even if they're in drama students in high school, coming to a film workshop, they're going to learn a lot and the difference in acting on a camera close right, up versus right. playing to a big room. Musicians are such a big part of it. You know, uh, mu music for film. Uh, scores, but also music selection. Um, so yeah, and then also just life skills. I mean, the way we tell it is, you know, even telling your own personal story for college applications. Right. I think that it applies in a lot of different areas. And obviously, a big focus is training the local talent here to be equipped, so that when you do have film productions that come here to Memphis, you're the place to go to be able to provide the staff, the gaffers, the talent. I mean, everything. Talk mm -hmm. about kind of that side of the economic development side of what you're doing. Yeah, well, so first we have our own grant program called Indie Grants, and so um, a few filmmakers each year win cash and services to make short films in Memphis for Memphis filmmakers. We also have a residency program that just started this year, bringing filmmakers from outside of Memphis to Memphis to develop their stories and hopefully shoot them here. And then when a production does come in town, uh, like we were talking about Brian Banks, uh, which is Tom Shadyac's feature film, right. then the crew has some experience and they're ready to go. And that's what we really need is to keep building up this crew base so that more productions will come and they'll be happy with the results of, of, of the crew that worked with them. Absolutely. So you started by talking about the big Indie Memphis Film Festival. So yeah. that's something that uh, November, share a little bit more about this huge, fest huge festival. Yeah. I mean, we're four years in a row of, of, grow, of growth, of attendance growth, and, and uh, we're going to continue what we started last year. We actually shut down a block on Cooper, uh, you know, right in the theater district, and we're in seven theaters at once. So basically all these weekly films we have throughout the year leading up to the big event. And so the festival this year is November 1st through 5th, and we have over 100 filmmakers that travel to Memphis, so you have a chance to meet people that you wouldn't otherwise and see their work exhibited and ask them questions questions about it, the actors, the directors, producers, um, and also it's just a lot of fun. There's parties, um, uh, live music before every film, so it's just kind of the big the big climax of, of our year in no November. So how can we help? I mean, obviously coming out, being supportive in terms of showing up and watching the films, um, making the films, especially you know on our end, going through the programs, but how else can we help? Well, um, we have a $50 a year membership, so it's tax deductible, very affordable. We have a lot of free events as well, so our membership kind of helps build that base for us each year. But as you said, literally just showing up means a lot. As our audience continues to grow, then we have the confidence to keep expanding and growing our programs. And then really just bringing out other people. Um, you know, it, it's mostly word of mouth based. We have some advertising, but we are a nonprofit organization. So we really rely on advocates to bring out other people. And you know, most people that come to our events have a lot of fun and want to come back. Well, tell us the website, yeah. contact information. How do we get in touch? Sure, it's IndieMemphis.com, you know, I-N-D-I-E, Memphis.com, as an independent film. A lot of people don't know what Indie means. Uh, that's just the easiest thing to say. Social media is the next. Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram we're very involved on. You can go on and learn about all the movies that are playing now. Uh, in May, we partner with Memphis in May for uh, films of their country they're honoring, so the Czech Republic. We've got some interesting movies in May. And then see you at the festival in November. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Ryan, thanks for all you do and appreciate you coming on the show. Thank thanks. you. Thanks. Appreciate it. They're a family theater providing wholesome entertainment and youth development. I'm here with the board member and director of community relations for DeSoto Family Theater, Dan Lehman. And let's start. Rich Legacy doing amazing things in the Mid-South. Tell us a little about DeSoto Family Theater and the history. DeSoto Family Theater started in 2000, and, and the uh, name originally was DeSoto Youth Theater. Our purpose was to provide the youth in the uh, North Mississippi area a place to perform and learn about the performing arts. From there, we grew into DeSoto Family Theater because we had so many families and uh, parents wanting to be on stage with their children. 
and we grew into great shows like Annie going on, full family entertainment, full families involved. Every time we did the show, there were many times where it was families, mothers, fathers, sons and daughters, all together on stage or backstage or working crew. It's a wonderful experience. So when we went from that path of DeSoto Youth Theater to family theater, we decided to go from no doing only youth related shows to full family fun shows like Les Mis or Annie or uh, Oklahoma. So it takes a lot of adults as well as children to work together to make an experience like that happen. And this is one of those where obviously you put on a certain number of productions throughout the year and then you have summer camps and everything in between. So kind of dive into some of the nuances. So what we do is the, the, uh, we have six shows that we do every year now. We were originally only doing one show a year and now we moved it up to six shows of which four are full theater productions and to our junior shows, we call those kids shows, where we bring in a lot of people to help them learn all the aspects. Not only do the children have to learn, but the parents have to learn how to support some of the things that we're doing, be it props, set construction, uh, costuming, all the things that go into making a production a production. We teach the children how to learn in a time-bound way what they have to do, learn their scripts, learn their choreography, learn the music. The parents help along the way. It's a lot of inter interaction that just, it's amazing when the parents learn, I didn't realize theater took this much work. I didn't realize you, ha you had to do so much behind the scenes. And then when you get involved in a live production, how do you anticipate how to work in that live production to make sure everything happens on time the way it was scheduled. And when things don't happen in a live production, what do you do to recover and how do you make that work? Absolutely. All good life skills because no matter where you go, theater can help a child learn how to go into work someplace. Uh, the acronym on stage is be seen, be heard, be understood. If no one understands what you're saying, the message is lost. So if you, you go articulate. Yes. So if you go into the career of being a doctor or a, um, a um, working in TV, working in any field, a salesperson, an office manager, what do you have to do? You have a message. You have to communicate. You have to get people to buy into it. You have to help them lay out the task. All good work skills come from this type of interaction that can be taught in the theater, not only for performing arts, but if you want to go out and work in the world, not only on stage, but what if you want to become a sound engineer? You sure. can learn that. Right. What if you want to become an electrician and work at the Orpheum? You can learn that. And we can facilitate that. Or what if you've never been exposed to what it's like to become a FedEx pilot? People who work with us are FedEx pilots. People who work with us are doctors. It's a positive influence from the community back to the young people to help them learn their way and learn where they're going. Talk about the summer camps. Summer camps. We do four camps every summer, sometime in the June, July time frame, and we run them uh, concurrently. So one camp starts, the next one's starting. So the morning time, we have about 60 kids in the morning and then 60 kids in the afternoon, two different shows. Those shows and the, are, are also using the youth, 18-year-old kids that are bringing back their talent, giving back to the younger, encouraging them to see how to run a project, learning how to teach young people the thrill and the joy of theater. And those uh, kids then help to make the show. And at the end of a week or two week process, they've learned choreography, learned blocking. Their parents come to see their show and they have a really positive uh, experience working with sometimes children they've never met or seen from somewhere else in the community. Talk about some of your favorite shows. I know it's kind of like picking your favorite <clears throat> child, but you know, you've done some really amazing shows and you've won a lot of awards. So this is not a typical family theater. I mean, this is a, you are going all out with the set design. It is amazing, these shows. Favorite show of all time, I would say was Les Mis. That, the whole process of making that happen uh, with not only the talent, and you have many different talents where you have a lead, but the whole ensemble has to be strong because each one of those people has to provide the lead something to act against. If you have a strong lead and no one's acting against it, it really makes the show flat. Everything came together in that show. Not only did we do a show with a set design that had to move and move fast, we had some amazing special effects. We had pyrotechnics brought in from the community, Randy Blast, and we were blowing up things. We were creating a barricade. We were firebombing things on stage. We had smoke and haze. It was just a beautiful experience. And then you had the tragedy and you have the story being told in a way that's that helps people understand what happened at that time right. and what can happen if people uh, uh, get involved. They see the story of something that happened in the past and they can say, how does that happen today and what can I do to prevent repeating things? Right. So Les Mis was a phenomenal one. Uh, the drama, the diary of Anne Frank, what a tragedy. If we don't see things like that portrayed on stage, a lot of people forget the history of what really happened there. So that has a real serious place in my heart and that's rolled out into a Holocaust museum. 
being established in DeSoto County for that particular awareness, and we helped make that happen. So the uh, those are two really favorites. I can say there's so many, many, many more that, that I could go on forever. Well, and you've had, you know, your actors go on and do amazing things and have very, very, very successful careers. So the success legacy is huge as well. Talk about some of the shows coming up and how we can get involved. Camelot is coming up next. Uh, that runs the end of April. And then uh, our website, www.dft online, DeSoto Family Theater online.org is our website. And all of our shows, our camps, our information about what we're doing and when and how you can be involved is listed there. Uh, we not only support what we're doing in our theater, but we also help all the high schools in right. DeSoto County and around the community. ECS is borrowing stuff and using things. So we're helping with our skills, reach out to the community and help the community reach back to us and put talent on stage and make this whole uh, effort a wonderful experience and, en and enriching for the whole family and the whole community. Anybody who would love to be involved, our website encourages you to get involved. We're looking for volunteers to help build. We're looking for retired people to help uh, work with the, as ushers, costumes, whatever. We have so many different ways to get involved. Or you can just donate money. That's also a good way to provide help to the th theater. Well, Dan, greatly appreciate all you do. Appreciate you coming on the show. Thank, Thank you. you for having me. The Spark Awards annually recognize and celebrate individuals and organizations that have made outstanding contributions to the community. This year's recipient of the Corporate Award for companies with 100 employees or fewer is Champion Awards and Apparel. Champion Awards and Apparel is a family-owned corporation for 47 years in the Memphis area. We brand and produce over a million apparel items a year, screen print and embroider. Uh, we manufacture trophies, and out of our 3,000 customers, 1,000 of them are nonprofits. And of course, these days, the, the big thing is web. And so we help companies brand themselves in apparel and promotional products uh, through web stores. We're very fortunate and doing very well. And obviously for nonprofits, that's huge because it helps them brand, share their mission, but also raise money. Right. Our, our biggest uh, goal is to what we actually sell uh, accomplishes a mission. Talk about Late Bloomers. This is an amazing program that you started. It's giving people a second chance, but it's giving them the skills, the livelihood to ultimately turn their lives around. Well, just like Champion Awards and Apparel, uh, my mom, who started Champion Trophy in 1970 in a barn, uh, called me one day and said, uh, uh, you need to hire this young man. And I said, Mom, I'm, I'm, I bought you out. I'm not going to hire uh, a man from, from prison. She was uh, teaching uh, in prisons. She was retired. She decided to teach in prisons uh, of, to young men of how to get uh, obtain jobs. and. Um, and so consequently, I ended up hiring a young man and uh, eight years ago. And it turned into late bloomers four years later. We developed a four-year journeyman training program patterned after union journeyman program. You got now people who are buying homes who never before had the ability for their family. So, so talk about what it's meant to you and to these, these employees. We've actually, uh, trained over 125 ex-offenders. There are over 20,000 in the community, and I hate the word expert, but I've somewhat become very, very knowledgeable about uh, the plight of ex-offenders. It, it just seemed like kismet when my mom called. The light bulb went on. We were having issues finding employees, and um, after four years of this, um, we decided to establish a training program, and We've hired over 35, and we presently have 17. And I'm proud to say we've had over, we've had three buy homes. All of them have bought vehicles, and they're taking care of their families. That's the most rewarding thing that I get out of this to see them taking care of their families.
They're a company known for storytelling and striking photography, along with a Memphis collection that gives back. I'm here with the photographer, the owner of Creation Studios, Donnie Granger. And let's start, you have a different perspective, a different story when you talk about starting a studio, a company focused on photography and filmmaking and everything in between, but tell us a little bit of your story for starting Creation Studios. Yeah, it was a, it was a strange start, uh, to say the least. I wasn't, not, I wasn't a photographer, I wasn't a videographer. Um, I was a teacher in inner city Memphis, and my wife and I had a new child, and she was staying at home, and I needed a way to make extra money. I needed a way to do something, and this was when the digital revolution happened. And uh, I looked at the cameras talking to computers and thought, I think there's something there. I think that's going to be big. And so I just went out and invested a ton of money in to gear and computers. Never didn't even own a computer at the time. <laughs> and I went and figured out how to use it all and figured out how to uh, market myself and helped people tell stories back in the day when it was just first getting started in a digital way. And it allowed me to, to continue to express myself artistically and it just kept growing. And before I knew it, I was a full-time videographer and then a photographer and now I have a business with seven people working for me and working on with Broad me Avenue. on Broad Avenue. It's fantastic. So I had no idea what I was doing when I started. I just knew I was an artist and I wanted to tell stories and this seemed like a cool way to do it. And here we are. Absolutely. So talk about all you do because it's everything from the photography, the videography, but 3D. I mean, so give us a full slate of what you cover. Yeah. Uh, you know, you could define it just as if it's visual, if it's an image for a company or a person and the world needs to see it, we can help with that. So photography, everything from commercial to corporate to headshots, anything that needs to look good, videography, storytelling, and then now 3D is cool. We've, we've bought the gear, we've invested in the, the time and talent to figure that out, and now we're helping businesses tell their story in a 3D way, so you can walk through and tour different places. And yeah, it's virtual tours. It's yeah. like, I'm going here, I'm going here. It's really yeah. cool. So basically, I like anything that is visual, and if we can help tell a story with it, we're going to get into it. We actually have a, a, an initiative at our studio that we have to create something that's there's no strings attached, we have to create something in our studio for just ourselves, just for the sake of creating. So we had one guy creating a, what's called a cinemagraph where you, it's moving, uh, it's a photograph, but it's got moving parts in it. We've got another guy who created a whole new web page on how to do this cool painting style that he does. Myself, I broke out my art pad and pencils and I started sketching again. And so I've got this, this beautiful picture of apples that I'm working on. Just. It has, that forces the hand on creativity exactly. and growth and development. And so when you're looking at a story, especially through a lens, you know, give us one tip to what, what tells a unique story when mm. you're taking a picture or looking at it from a video standpoint. What, do you, what are something that you're looking for? You know, there, there's something woven into the heart of every person. We, we connect with other people. And interestingly, in business, it turns out there's just people. <laughs> Uh, we get hired to do something for a company, but behind it all is people, and the customers are people. And so I think the, the unique perspective, it's not unique to us, but one that we always uh, are very keen on is what is the human story behind whatever it is you're wanting us to help you with. So, for example, Service Master by Stratus, we've done a lot of work for them. They had in mind to do a, a story on one of their core values, which is helping people become their fullest. And instead of just telling the world this is what they believe, they set us free to create whatever we wanted to create. So we created a, a, a documentary about one of their employees who went from the streets of LA as helping with the drug industry to Memphis with his family, and now he's a manager at Service Master by Stratus. And so we were able to create this beautiful story. People are crying. And do you think that the world knows that Service Master by Stratus cares about their people? Absolutely. But we did it in a way that was heartfelt and real. And so when you ask, what is it about what we do uh, in, when we're looking at art, the key is find the human story. Whatever you're talking about, whether it's cups or widgets, whatever you make, there's a human story. It's a why the world should care. Let's talk about your philanthropy. Talk about the Memphis Collection and how that started and what that is and why that's so important to you. The Memphis Collection was really fun. Uh, it began with Johnny Pitts at Lipscomb and Pitts Insurance saying, would you spend the next 18 months capturing Memphis? And so I was free to go with my camera wherever my heart led me. Uh, cloudy day, beautiful clouds, I'm gonna go downtown and do something. A, a very foggy day, I grabbed my camera and ran out to Shelby Farms and did some cool stuff over the lake. Uh, it was so much fun and just such a joy to create in that way. The goal was to create a collection of Memphis pictures that Johnny would be proud of to put in into his office building that then we could share with the rest of Memphis. 
And so office buildings all over town, private individuals, everybody's sharing this love of Memphis. And so it's just been a, it's so much fun to see it keep going. It's still going. We're still adding to the collection now. And the proceeds benefit the Fallen Officer Memorial. So yeah. it gives back. Yeah, absolutely gives back. That's what makes it so special. That's what I think the Memphians can, can rally around. It's so fun to, to, they're beautiful pictures. People love to look at them. But then you get one level, one level deeper where you start talking about the, the fact that it's giving back to something that everyone cares about. So the Memphis Fallen Officer Memorial, we're all going to rally behind this. When it happens, it's going to be big. We're going to be excited about it. And we're going to know that all of these pieces on walls all across Memphis in all these office buildings, uh, each one of those contributed to that happening. And so we're excited just to be a part of it. Tell everyone where they can learn more about Creation Studios. Yeah, creationmemphis.com. You can get to everything we do, photo, video, 3D, all the social media stuff. Yeah, we like connecting. Well, Donnie, for all you do, appreciate it. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks, Jeremy. As we saw in this month's episode, the process of creating art can be powerful for both the artist and our community at large. Art, like movies, a theater production, or photography, can be the tool to teach children and adults life skills, confidence, discipline. Art can connect people through stories and emotions. It can change perspectives and challenge stereotypes. And it can add humor or light in moments of darkness. Art can also be a powerful vehicle for helping companies, nonprofits, and even cities not only become more beautiful, but raise awareness and funds as well. The best part is that organizations like Indy Memphis and DeSoto Family Theater and companies like Creation Studios are all using art as a force for good to make a difference in our community. And that's truly powerful. Thank you for watching The Spark. To learn more about each of the guests, to watch past episodes, and to share your stories of others leading by example, visit WKNO.org and click on the link for The Spark. We look forward to seeing you next month, and we hope that you'll join with us in creating a spark for the Mid-South. Just like having relevant and accurate information is necessary to make sound, hiring, and lending decisions, being engaged in our community is important. DataFacts is proud to support the positives and be a sponsor of The Spark. Lipscomb and Pitts Insurance is honored to serve the Memphis community for over 60 years. We've always focused on supporting our community and believe in promoting the positives, encouraging engagement, and leading by example. Lipscomb and Pitts Insurance is proud to be a presenting sponsor of The Spark.